In this section of Lecture 1, we will talk about writability, reliability, and other influences on programming languages. Writability is all about the programmer's ability to get the program written correctly. This requires that the language has the data types and algorithmic constructs that are necessary for the type of problems that the programmer is looking to solve. Writability used to be much less important than getting the program to translate and to run efficiently. Since computers execute so much more quickly than they did years ago, the ability to write a program quickly and correctly has become far more important. The problem domain is a very important variable in determining the writability of a language. COBOL and SQL are great at report generation but neither is any good at matrix multiplication. The reverse would be true for APL or FORTRAN. The most important thing about a language is its ability to allow someone to express abstract ideas. In the case of a programming language, it needs to be able to support the data abstractions that a programmer needs. Binary trees can serve as an example. Neither FORTRAN nor BASIC have historically supported pointers, nor even structures. This makes it difficult to use them to implement binary trees, but not impossible. Although it can be done, it is not very graceful, nor is it very writable. Reliability is about our ability to be certain that the program will work and that there will be no unexpected or unwanted behavior on the part of the program. This is not always so easy to ensure. Some languages have rules that can be difficult to check at translation time or even at runtime. Additionally, making a programming language reliable will frequently hurt its ability to translate a program quickly. And improving a compiler's translation efficiency can hurt reliability. Sometimes it becomes very important to find a balance between these two conflicting goals. There are several factors that contribute to reliability. Among them are type checking, exception handling, and aliasing. Type checking is a big factor in program reliability. This requires that data items' behaviors must remain consistent with their type. This means that their values have to stay within an appropriate range, that they perform only those operations that they are allowed to perform, and no improper type conversions are performed. If you know the C programming language, you know exactly why this can be a problem. Exception handling is all about the ability to catch runtime errors that can cause the program's results to be incorrect. Problems of this nature can be fairly obvious, like division by zero, or trying to find the square root of a negative number. Or they can be specific to a particular type of problem such as an item code for a product not matching the required format. When a programming language allows the programmer to reference a data object in more than one way, this is known as aliasing. It can create far more problems than it necessarily solves, because changes made using one approach to referencing that data object may not be recognized when you use another approach to referencing the same data object. A lot of decisions in engineering design are based in part on economics. Many years ago, a co-worker of mine said that the three B's of computers were bits, bytes, and bucks, with bucks referring to the dollars and cents spent on computer hardware and software. And there is a lot of expense associated with translating, testing, and running programs. In the early days of computing, program execution was a major expense because computers cost hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. And given that they were not expected to be used for more than five to ten years, that made their execution time fairly expensive. But with the prices of computers falling and the execution speeds rising, this is no longer a serious concern. When we look at the cost of translation, there are two costs that we need to consider. The cost of running the translation program whether it is a compiler or an interpreter, and the extra execution time introduced by the relatively inefficient code generated by the compiler or interpreter. Optimizing compilers adds something to the cost of translating, 
but this will be recouped when the program runs because optimized object code runs much faster. There is a cost associated with the creating of the program in testing it and in using it. A programming language that is not that writable will increase the cost of creating a program. If the language is not that readable, it may increase the cost of testing and correcting it. And these issues factor into the cost of maintaining the program, because if it is harder to read and harder to write, it may be harder to modify. There are other factors that can influence programming language design. Computer architecture is one of these factors. Early languages were heavily influenced by the design of the hardware on which they ran. While this is no longer as big an influence in most cases, this is not always so. The introduction of vector processors and multi-core and multi-processor computers have led to some changes in the design of programming languages used on these computers. Programming methodologies have also influenced language design. The desire to rid the computing world of the dread go-to led to the design of Algol, Pascal, C, and other languages that were more structured. It was Bjarni Strustrup's desire to introduce objects into C programming that led to the development of C++ and the several other languages inspired by it. Although newer computer processors are multi-core, we still look at the von Neumann architecture, to a certain extent, as the basis of computer architecture design. Although we do not consider instructions to be executed in a purely sequential fashion, it is still true to a certain extent, and we still use the same memory to hold instructions and data. The concept of the stored program and its instruction set gave rise to imperative languages such as Fortran and COBOL. This same design also helped stifle the adoption of functional languages because programmers resisted their use. As computers are doing more and more in parallel, newer languages are being developed to take advantage of this, and more older languages are being adapted to incorporate these features. New methodologies include structured programming techniques and the languages designed for these purposes and the kind of data abstraction that we see in object-oriented languages. These advances have allowed the development of more complex programs because they provide programmers with the tools that they need to simplify many complex tasks in software development. 